The paralyzing effect of succinylcholine is supposed to last about 5 to 10 minutes. However, the effect of succinylcholine may be prolonged under three conditions. The conditions are a low pseudocholinesterase enzyme level, atypical pseudocholinesterase enzyme, and in case of a phase 2 block. Now the normal serum level of pseudocholinesterase enzyme is about 80 units per milliliter of blood. A clinically significant prolongation of succinylcholine effect may be seen if the serum pseudocholinesterase enzyme level fall below 75% of the normal and pseudocholinesterase enzyme levels may be reduced in liver diseases because it is synthesized in the liver and as it is a protein any protein losing enteropathy uropathy chronic cachexic diseases like malignancy or in case of newborns and old age, alcoholics, and dietary hyperproteinemia, or pregnancy, the levels may be reduced. On the other hand, there may be a direct inhibition of the enzyme by some cytotoxic drugs, particularly alkylating agents, and Cholinesterase inhibitors like neostigmine, pyridostigmine, and ecothiophate, which normally reverse the effect of non depolarizing muscle relaxants. But in case of a depolarizing muscle relaxant like succinylcholine, they prolong the effect of the relaxant. Other drugs that may inhibit the effect of Pseudocholinesterase enzyme include metoclopramide, pancuronium, the oral contraceptives, and bambuterol or a beta blocker like asmolol. Now, if somebody encounters this situation, then the management involves three things. The first and the most obvious one being providing continuous IPPV, that is intermittent positive pressure ventilation, till spontaneous recovery is seen. Another option is to give a fresh frozen plasma, assuming that the plasma of a normal person would have a normal level of pseudocholinesterase enzyme. And the third option is to give a heat-treated preparation of cholinesterase enzyme itself. However, this is only available in few countries. Now, the second cause of prolonged action of succinylcholine is atypical or abnormal pseudocholinesterase enzyme. The levels in the plasma may be normal, but the enzyme is abnormal. It is atypical. It is a genetic disease in which the patient has abnormal enzyme, which is not able to metabolize succinylcholine. The incidence is roughly 1 in 3000, and it is diagnosed by the Bouquin number. I will not explain what a debucane number is here in this video. I will be making another video for debucane number. The treatment option for abnormal pseudocholinesterase enzyme is essentially the same as that for a low level of pseudocholinesterase enzyme. And the third and last cause for a prolonged succinylcholine effect is a phase 2 block. 
the exact pathology of a phase 2 block is not understood but some of the mechanism may be number one desensitization where repeated dose of succinylcholine may have produced structural changes in the receptor which undergoes desensitization another theory is channel blockade succinylcholine molecules enter the open channel and produce prolonged block and the third theory is calcium mediated injury to the end plate now in order for the phase 2 block to occur succinylcholine has to be given in large dose more than 5 mg per kilogram of body weight or a total dose of more than 500 mg a phase 2 block can be diagnosed by using a neuromuscular monitoring which will show fading pattern fading on neuromuscular monitoring is pathognomonic of a phase 2 block the management for a phase 2 block essentially include maintaining IPPV or in 40 to 50 percent of individuals the block may reverse by itself in 10 20 or 30 minutes in the remaining cases a trial of neostigmine can be given if there is no response even after 30 minutes if neostigmine is to be given it should not be given in the early stage because it will worsen the block Again, sufficient evidence stating the role of neostigmine in phase 2 block is still lacking. That is all for succinylcholine apnea. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share.